The following three examples come from your homework packet, um, from your section of points, lines, planes, angles, distance, and logic, and parallel lines. Go ahead and split your paper into four, and we're going to be going over four different examples. For example one, it says, if the measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is 72 degrees, how many sides does the polygon have? I'm going to start by underlining or highlighting anything that's important. So, first of all, I know that they're asking me for an exterior angle and that it's of a regular polygon. Regular meaning all the sides are equal. All sides equal. Um, I know that each angle on the outside is 72 degrees and the question is how many sides does the polygon have? Now for exterior angles, here's what I know. The exterior angles always have a sum of 360 degrees. So I have some shape, but I know that all of the angles on the outside add up to 360, and that, that means that any shape, the exterior angles add up to 360 degrees. Now I know that one of those angles is 72 degrees. So if I take 360 degrees and I divide it by 72, this should tell me how many angles so the number of angles, or exterior angles, that it has. And the number of exterior angles is also equal to the number of sides. So the question is, how many times does 72 fit into 360? Now I'm going to make a guess here. I think it's 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. And I made a good guess. That means that this is a five-sided figure, um, polygon, or a pentagon. For example two, let's see what they've given us. If the measures of the interior angles of an octagon are 3x, x, x, 2x plus 27, x, 3x, x minus 1, and 2x plus 4, then what's the measure of the biggest angle? Let's highlight what's important. First of all, for this problem, they're asking us for interior angles, and those are the angles on the inside of an octagon. An octagon has eight sides, so eight interior angles. Let's see if that's true. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And of those eight angles, they want us to find the biggest angle of all. Now notice that for this problem, the octagon isn't a regular octagon. That means the angles are all different measurements. And that makes sense because all these expressions are different. Each one of these is a little bit different, and one of them will represent the biggest angle of all. So let's go ahead and see if we can find it. The first thing I need to know is think about what do I know about interior angles? Well, the interior angle sum the interior angle sum is the number of sides minus 2 times 180. So if I wanted to find how much all of these angles add up to, I'd have to use this formula. So I'm going to take the number of sides, subtract by 2, and multiply by 180. That's going to be 6 times 180. And if I do a little calculation over here, times 6, 6 times 0 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48, and 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 is 1080. That means all of the angles should add up to 1080. So what does that mean if all the angles on the inside add up to 1080? Well, it means that I can set up the equation 3x, x, x, 2x plus 27, x, 3x, x minus 1, and 2x plus 4 all equal 10, I almost fit it, 1080. So those are my eight angles. They add up to 1080. Now I'm just going to combine like terms. So I've got 3x's, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 x's. And I have 27 minus 1, that's 26, plus 4, that's 30, equals 1080. So now I've simplified everything into a really simple two-step equation. 
If I subtract 30 from both sides, I end up getting 14x equals 1050. And when I divide by 14, I have to ask myself, does 1050, is it divisible by 14 evenly? Uh, 14 fits into 1050, I know 105, 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9, and if I subtract that, 105 minus 98 is 7. If I bring down the 0, 14 fits into 75 times, 5 times 4 is 20, and 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. If I subtract that 0, that means x is 75 degrees. But that's what x equals. We have to remember, the question was, what is the biggest angle? Now, when I look at these expressions, I can tell every angle is different, except for these three angles all are the same, and 3x and 3x represent two angles that are the same. The two biggest angles, I think, are either 3x and 3x, or 2x plus 27. Let's kind of do some mental math here. 75 degrees is what x is. So 2 times 75, that's 150, plus 27, it's about 170, right? What's 3 times 75? 3 times 70 would be 210. That's already much bigger than 150. That means, and I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here, that my biggest angle, biggest angle, or angles, I should say, are 3x, or 3 times 75. So what is 3 times 75? Well, 75 times 3, that's 15. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22. They're 225 degrees. So my biggest angles are 3x, or 225 degrees each. For example 3, here's what's given. It says line A is parallel to line B, so these two lines are parallel. Line M is parallel to N, so these two lines are parallel. And the measure of angle 1 is 82. I'm going to start by marking up my diagram, as I always should. So, so first I'm going to show that this line is parallel to this line, and this line is parallel to that line. And I know that angle 1 is 82 degrees. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what we know, given this diagram. I know that this angle that's opposite to that one, these are vertical angles, so this is 82 degrees. And I know if that's 82 degrees right here, I know that this is alternate interior angles, so alternate interior angles are congruent, so this is 82 degrees also. So now I'm getting closer to angle 2. Now my question is, what's the relationship between these two angles? Well, these two angles are called same side interior angles. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So same side interior angles are, I hope you can finish this sentence, they're supplementary. And I think I can fit this in supplementary. <laughs> supplementary means they add up to 180. So that means if I take 180 degrees and subtract 82, I should be able to find the measure of angle 2. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow here. So this is going to become 0, and 18 will become, 8 will become 18. I still need to get to the 0 here, so I'm going to borrow again. This is 17, and the 0 is now a 10. 10 minus 2 is 8, and 17 minus 8 is 9. That means the measure of angle 2 is 98 degrees. Now for our last example. For this question they're asking, what is the length of AG shown below? First, the first thing I notice is that they're asking me for the length, and the length I know is the same as, yep, the distance. So I'm going to have to use the distance formula. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. Let me see. I hope I can fit this in. The distance is the square root of the sum of the differences of the x values and the y values squared. So I need two points in order to use this formula. So I'm going to start off by naming these points. Um, this point right here is the point, let's see, 1, 2, 3. So it's over 3 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3, comma 4. And A is the point negative 1, negative 2, and it's up 1. So those are my points. I'm going to go ahead and label them. I'm going to call this my first point. 
and I'm going to call this my second point. So let's go ahead and put in my values here. The distance is the square root of the sum of the differences. Okay, let's put in our x values first. So my x, my x2 is 3, my x1 is negative 2, my y2 is 4, and my y1 is 1. That means I have the distance of 3 plus 2, that's 5 squared, plus 4 minus 1, that's 3 squared. So my distance is the square root of 25 plus 9, or the square root of 34. Now, 34 is 2 times 17, so there are no pairs in there, so this is the actual distance.